From Southern Oregon Public Television in Medford, Oregon, this is Democracy Now! This is a serious and big storm. And my first message is to uh, all people uh, across uh, the eastern seaboard, mid-Atlantic, uh, going north, that you need to take the this very seriously. The superstorm arrives. Tens of millions from the Carolinas to Boston brace for Hurricane Sandy, possibly the largest storm ever to hit the U.S. mainland. We'll speak with climate scientist Greg Jones here in Oregon, meteorologist Jeff Masters, and writer and activist Bill McKibben on the connection between global warming and hurricanes. The basic physical property here is that warm air holds more water vapor than cold. You can get stronger storms. Uh, the atmosphere is about 4% wetter than it was 40 years ago. That's an enormous change in a basic physical parameter. It loads the dice for both drought as you're getting increased evaporation and deluge and downpour and flood. And that's what we're seeing all over the planet. We will also go to Haiti, where Hurricane Sandy killed at least 50 people, devastating parts of the country still recovering from the 2010 earthquake. And we'll look at the storm's impact on the nuclear industry. At least 16 nuclear plants are in the path of this unprecedented storm. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting from Medford, Oregon. Much of the East Coast is shut down today as residents brace for Hurricane Sandy, a massive storm that could be the most powerful to hit the United States in decades. Hundreds of thousands of people have already been evacuated. Millions could lose power over the next day. Meteorologists say Hurricane Sandy is a rare hybrid superstorm created by an Arctic jet stream wrapping itself around a tropical storm, creating what could be the largest hurricane ever to hit the U.S. mainland. On Sunday, President Obama urged East Coast residents to take the storm very seriously. This is a serious and big storm. And my first message is to uh, all the people uh, across uh, the eastern seaboard, mid-Atlantic, uh, going north, that you need to take this very seriously and follow the instructions of your state uh, and local officials, uh, because they are going to be providing you with uh, the best advice in terms of how to deal with this storm over the coming days. The storm has already killed 66 people in the Caribbean, where it battered Haiti and Cuba. In Haiti, a top U.N. relief official warned of a heightened risk of a new outbreak of waterborne disease. So the entire southern peninsula, um, including uh, the, the province, the county where Port au Prince is, uh, had been, has been very heavily affected with flooding. Um, uh, rivers have burst uh, out of their banks. Uh, the canals uh, running through uh, port au prince because port au prince lies in a valley surrounded by hills. What we fear most is uh, that there might be spikes in waterborne diseases, especially cholera, uh, which we always see after uh, flooding or rains uh, in Haiti. New York is among a number of U.S. cities to close schools and transit systems in preparation for the storm. The entire New York subway system is being shut down for the second time in 14 months after no previous instances. The New York Stock Exchange is also closed in its first unscheduled shutdown since 2001. On Sunday, New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg ordered the evacuation of tens of thousands in low-lying areas. Uh, in light of these conditions, I'm going to sign an executive order mandating evacuation of Zone A areas. I'm also ordering that all of the city's public schools be closed on Monday. Now, first, as to the evacuation zone, let me stress that we are ordering this evacuation for the safety of the approximately 375,000 people who live in these areas. If you live in these areas, you should leave them this afternoon. With just over a week before the election, both President Obama and Republican challenger Mitt Romney have scaled back campaigning as Hurricane Sandy approaches. 
The two campaigns have canceled a combined 17 events and suspended fundraising emails in states that lie in the storm's path. On Saturday, President Obama rallied supporters in New Hampshire, where he criticized Romney's record as governor of neighboring Massachusetts. During Governor Romney's campaign for governor down there, he promised the same thing he's promising now. Said he'd fight for jobs and middle-class families. But once he took office, he pushed through a tax cut that overwhelmingly benefited 278 of the wealthiest families in the state. And then he raised taxes and fees on middle-class families to the tune of $750 million. Does that sound familiar to you? Appearing meanwhile in Ohio, Romney rallied supporters by invoking the mantra of a fictional football team depicted in the television drama Friday Night Lights. There's a uh, fictional football team that used to be on TV. And as the team would go out of their locker room, often facing a daunting odds, they'd touch a sign that said, uh, clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. You've seen it. And, uh, and that's how I feel about Ohio. You guys, you got clear eyes and full hearts. And on November 6th, we can't lose with your help. We're taking back America. At least four people were killed Sunday when U.S. drones struck northern Yemen. The victims were alleged militants in Sada province, though U.S. policy is to deem any adult-age male targeted by drones as a militant unless proven otherwise after they're killed. It was the fourth known U.S. drone strike inside Yemen this month. Violence is continuing unabated in Syria, despite an international ceasefire brokered late last week. On Sunday, Syrian activists said at least 16 people, including seven children, were killed when government warplanes bombed residential areas in the province of Idlib. Aerial attacks were also reportedly launched on eastern suburbs of the capital of Damascus. The top United Nations investigator on Palestinian human rights is calling for a boycott of all companies linked to settlements in the occupied West Bank. Richard Falk, the special rapporteur on human rights in the Palestinian territories, said firms including Hewlett-Packard, Motorola, Volvo and Caterpillar are complicit in the Israeli occupation. This is uh, an attempt to reach out beyond the intergovernmental and international institutional system. And one of the things that our report uh, recommends is encouragement of the boycott of these corpor named corporations and encouragement of civil society actors to join in that boycott. The Obama administration has rejected Falk's proposal, calling it, quote, irresponsible and unacceptable. Planned Parenthood has filed a new lawsuit challenging a funding ban in Texas that seeks to exclude from a program for low-income women. The Texas program offers cancer and health screenings, as well as birth control services, to some 130,000 women, about 40 percent of whom are served through Planned Parenthood. But Texas Governor Rick Perry has sought to bar Planned Parenthood's involvement because the group also provides abortions. An appeals court upheld the ban last week, but on Friday, a Texas judge issued a temporary restraining order pending arguments and a new challenge from Planned Parenthood. Attorneys for Planned Parenthood say the ban is illegal because it would force Texas to lose 90 percent of the program's funding from the federal government. A coalition of environmental groups has asked the Environmental Protection Agency to subject oil and gas extracting companies to the same emissions oversight as other energy industry sectors. The Environmental Integrity Project, the lead organization behind the request, says companies, especially those that conduct fracking, should have to report their emissions to the Toxic Release Inventory, or TRI. In a statement, the group said, quote, despite the many indications of the toxicity of the chemicals used in shale oil and gas removal, the extraction industry is one of the few within the energy sector that does not report to the TRI. The request comes on the heels of recent studies alleging increased health risks in communities exposed to fracking. A survey by Earthworks of residents in 14 Pennsylvania counties found fracking has led to an 80 percent increase in sinus problems and 70 percent increase in throat irritation. 
A recent U.S. geological survey study in Wyoming found fracking chemicals have again been found in the groundwater of the town of Pavilion, affirming the conclusion of an EPA study last year. And a leading Pakistani politician and campaigner against U.S. drone attacks was detained and questioned over his political views on Friday while trying to enter the United States. Imran Khan says he was taken off a flight from Toronto to New York and interrogated by U.S. agents about his public opposition to drones. Announcing the incident after his questioning, Khan tweeted, quote, My stance is known. Drone attacks must stop. Earliest month, Imran Khan led a march of thousands of people in Pakistan to rally against the drones. Imran Khan was a well-known uh, cricketer who's running for president in Pakistan. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're on the road in Medford, Oregon, broadcasting from Southern Oregon Public Television.